ain't drunk. I'm just drinking. But you're so high. Oh, man, you know I ain't high. But you're so high. Yeah, well, I just take a little sip every now and then. But you're so high. You ought to be ashamed Stay of yourself. Stay drunk all Oh, come on now. You all don't feel like that. Hey kids, we have a fun one today. You know, sadness filled the air. I'm out of rum, so I'm drinking this Long Island iced tea shit, and it's got a bug in it. And that's, ah, oh, damn it, look at that bug. Anyway, here we're gonna have some fun. Um, I think one of the attractions to this channel, if there is one besides Yoda, is the fact that we do things we meaning me and my split personalities, whatever. We do things a little bit unorthodox. So, I want you to look at this. Bam! Right? This is one of my little micros that I built out of a lizard frame. Has a Omnibus F4 uh, with OSD, a 25 amp ESC, 7500 kV motors with those new kick-ass hulky props. Bam! Here's what we're going to do. We are going to build or retrofit an RF booster into our RC transmitter. Now, my brother, and I'm, I'm flaming on his name, so on the next installment of this video, which should be tonight if Mama lets me, um, I'll mention his name there. But anyway, he's the one that brought it up to me when I did my uh, AT9 transmitter review. So, what I wanted to do... We'll show you guys how to take just about any transmitter, RC transmitter, and install a signal booster that's going to triple, double, triple, quadruple your range, depending on the transmitter, for 25 bucks, and that's what we're going to do. So you have to have, whenever you do a science experiment, which is what this is, you have to have a controlled environment, controlled attributes of the situation, okay? To, to, you know, do your tests in. So what we're going to do, <laughs> the video, the DVR you guys are going to see at the end of this video right here is pretty insane because what I wanted to do with this little micro, you know, only stupid people take these really high and I guess I must be stupid because that's what I did. This has a teeny tiny little micro receiver in it. You can't even see it. It's in the very bottom. Radio link one of those little thumbnail fuckers, and I modify the antennas on them to give me a little bit more range, but they're not as much range as a full-scale receiver. And this goes for about any transmitter, whether you're running Tyrannus or um, Spectrum, any of those guys. You know, the smaller the receiver, usually the least amount of range. So what I wanted to do was take this bird in particular, why, I don't know, I just picked it, and I wanted to do a range test on it until I literally lost radio range and it uh, went into fail safe and dropped out of the sky. Record it, DVR, which we did, and then show you guys how to install the booster, which is, where the fuck is it? Hang on a tick. Here it is. Whoa. Look at this shit, kids. And this is my, my buddy's idea. He's like, oh, have you tried this? But we're gonna. Look at that shit. Superlink, 2000 milliwatt for 2.4 gigahertz system. <laughs> so part two of this, kids, is going to be installing this into your radio transmitter, and uh, for any transmitter, just not not just Radio Link. Radio Link's what I use, but it should work for any transmitter. But I wanted to give you a before and an after. So what I did, usually, if you think to yourself, uh, one of the things you can do. I was thinking, what's the best way to test range? Well, the best way to test range is to use one of my drones that has the feedback and it tells you how many meters you are away from home and all that stuff. And that's very scientific and that's all well and good, but I really, I didn't leave the subdivision today. So what I did, you see a lot of guys doing range tests. They'll fly really fucking far away and then the thing will fall out of the sky. They'll go find it. I'm like, that's stupid, dude. I'm going to go vertical. <laughs> so that's what I did. I took my good old commanders and my super dick here, you know, my, uh, my antenna, pointed it straight up at the sky and flew that this little bird as high as it would possibly go until I lost radio signal. Now, there's a couple benefits to doing that. You're thinking, that's a little psycho. Well, there's no wind out today whatsoever. I mean, it's like a sparrow fart out there. There ain't nothing. So, my theory is, I, have, I make all my quads so they can arm at any angle. So basically what I do is I flew this thing up as high as it would possibly go twice. 
because I wanted two renditions of what it was going to do. And it literally went into fail-safe, boom, started dropping out of the sky and spinning. Then I took my transmitter, hang on a tick, took my transmitter and I disarmed, this is my arm disarm, I disarmed and waited for it to drop two or three hundred feet, because I think I was probably about a thousand feet maybe, vertically. And then, you know, I'm spinning, doing the death spiral down because it's totally disarmed, guys. When you see this thing falling, it is disarmed. I am not controlling it. I rearm mid, mid drop and boom, I fly at home. Then I did that twice um, just to get a relatively accurate measurement. Now, as you know from watching some of my other videos, I'm not all scientific about this. I have the ability to be all scientific about this. I can whip out my oscilloscope. I can do spectrum analyzers. I can do all that stuff. I don't want to. I want real world conditions. Okay. I did not want to go hunting for this little fucking bird after I've had five Long Island iced teas. Right. So I thought, fuck me. If you go vertical, you know where it's going to land. It's going to hit in your neighbor's chimney or hit some kid walking down the street or something like that. So I went st almost straight up vertical. You'll see it in the video coming up. I did that twice. I basically literally hit my throttle full, full tilt and just sat there and just waited for the damn thing to fault out or fail safe. And she started dropping, and then I regained and flew. So that is, boom, you're going to see that after this video. That is the before. Then part two is going to be installing this booster into my radio. Um, I'm going to show you a couple ways to do it, actually, because there's the right way, and there's the JSONified way, which is the way I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to install this within the transmitter, which really it's meant to go on the outside. But anyway. You'll see that in part two, which I'm going to try to do tonight. And then the next time I have zero wind outside, we're going to do the exact same thing in the subdivision everything. That way you guys can kind of see landmarks a little bit. And we're going to, I'm, my guess is I'm going to lose FPV feed before I lose receiver feed. In which case, if that happens, this is just a quad, it's not a drone, there's no return to home on it. So I'm just going to have to disarm, let it fall until my video comes back, and then fire it back up. So hopefully... Um, <laughs> God's going to get me for this one. I know he is. But anyway, that's okay. So um, stay tuned. I go up to full altitude. And now, mind you, this is not a full receiver. This is just one of those little thumbnail receivers. I do not know how far the range is. It, I know I'm up there at least 1,000 feet. I'm very used to flying 2,000 feet or so uh, with my drone. So I have a pretty good idea of how fa far up I was. Up it, you know, versus out. It's about the same thing. So um, up is worse for FPV, but it's better for radio. Out is better for FPV, and that's a whole other thing. But anyway, and worse for radio. Well, not necessarily worse, but anyway. Um, so you're going to get the gist. It doesn't matter. I mean, if you go, f you know, if I can go up so far that I completely lose FPV signal with this guy, <laughs> bam, then I know she worked. But this little booster, 2,000 milliwatts. Bam! Look at that shit. So, that's coming up. Watch this shit. You're going to be like, oh my god, you are fucking insane. But you know what? That's what it's all about. It's fun. Fun, fun, fun. So, on the after one, uh, after we do the install, and I, you know, hopefully tomorrow or Saturday there's a no wind day, we're going to take this exact same quad, exact same props, exact same battery, everything, and we're going to do the exact same throttle lift and we're just going to keep going until either I can't see it or I just get terrified and kill it and bring it down. So stay tuned. Bam. For part two of three. I'll be back in a minute. Bye.